Assalamu alaikum. So yesterday I was just watching the unveiling of the Apple Vision Pro, the mixed reality VR AR headset. And this was a brand new product, right? Apple has not brought out an actual brand new product line for a very long time. And so when they bring something out, it's a very big deal. And because for example, they make $200 billion just from iPhones, for them to start a new category of products for them to make and be bothered to really invest in and put out there, they need to see it as an opportunity to make at least $50 billion a year, for example. And one pattern that Apple has is that they will try to invent a category. So with the iPhone, they invented smartphones. Even though phones existed out there before, they came in and actually created it into this huge economy and industry that it is now. The same goes with iPads. I remember when they announced the iPad years ago, people laughed at it. People said no one would use it and no one did use it for the first three, four years. But now it's almost as common to see as a laptop. It's very much all over the place. And in 2022, they made $37 billion just off iPads. So if iPads were their own company, they would actually be a very big company. They might be a hundred billion dollar company in terms of their market valuation. So why am I saying this? And what's this got to do with us Muslim men developing, growing, becoming leaders of the Ummah and the world? Well, because when Apple creates a category, they're going to do everything they can to spread it throughout the world. So it becomes adopted. So it becomes amazing and easy to use and very tempting. And I'm someone actually, I love tech. I watch a lot of tech videos. I'm into tech. I like understanding tech and what's going on in the world. So it excited me, or it was at least interesting to me to see this new product category. I also like to see the business and marketing side of this stuff as well. But when I watched the trailer and the unveiling video, there was something in me that just felt, this is dystopian. This is messed up. This is the beginning of something that is going to be the end of us. I was thinking to myself, in 10 years time, I might remember this moment and remember the moment that everything went wrong. Because the truth is, I've been noticing a pattern, many of us have, of isolation seeping more and more into our lives. People are lonelier than they've ever been. They have less connections than they ever have. And something tells me this is not by accident. If you look at the ideology of individualism, which has been promoted and is very much a common attitude that people have, where everything is the focus on the self. What can I get? How can I benefit? I will help other people, but only if it doesn't inconvenience me too much. That selflessness that used to be in communal societies is very much dying out. And we have a very individualistic system set up right now. And when people's thinking is very much about themselves, then they break away from the communal and they just become individuals focused on their own good and not so much the good of the wider society, community, ummah. So that's the first thing, isolating us. We're being broken down in terms of you are an individual separate unit from everyone else and what's good for you might not be good for others. So focus on what's good for you. And obviously what comes with individualism is focusing on yourself and your own desires and just trying to get what you can get even if other people suffer the consequences. Another thing about isolation is remote work. Now, since Corona came in, it was very much, if you look at the messaging and you look at the policies and the advice we were being given, even though some of it might be sound medically, but it's very much stay away from other people, keep to yourself, be isolated. And that went on for a good one, two years. And so after that, people very much are more used to sticking to themselves, doing things in their own way in a very individualistic lifestyle. And a lot of people have continued that by working remotely and just literally waking up, brushing their teeth and going to another room and working from that room. And then when they finish work, they might even stay in that room and just like watch some YouTube and that's it very much an isolated existence. If they live alone, they're fully alone. If they live with family, they might interact a bit with their family, but they're certainly not going outside, going to the shops, going to meet with brothers in the masjid, this and that. It's a very isolated existence. And another pattern I've noticed is people moving away from where they're originally from to other cities for work, right? It's very common and you know people need to do it a lot of the time to just find work. And this is especially common in more developing countries where the family unit is being broken apart, right? Before it used to be, and I know this from my own family, is that it would be the parents live in a house 
and they might extend the house slowly bit by bit and they'll have all their kids, four, five, six kids, and all of those kids might live in the same house, grow up in that same house. Even when the boys, when the men get married, they bring their wives into the house and they're all living together. But now because people are looking to find work in bigger cities, instead of staying and living with your parents and your siblings and all of that and having that network around you, you are moving to another city where you start from scratch with no connections, no family, no support network. And of course, that is isolating. And even if you think about fashion and how these subcultures have become a big thing, like punk, emo, rap, this and that, these music and other subcultures, this is a way of splitting people apart now, where it's not enough to be from this country or this culture or this religion. No, we have subcategories of all people and it kind of just splinters apart. And that goes alongside the culture of trying to be very unique and be my own person and shout out almost for validation that accept me for who I am and how unique I am and my own unique thing. Whereas in other countries and other cultures, what I've seen is everyone is kind of the same. Everyone, you know, they follow their, their religion, their culture, and they're, they're just following it. And everyone has the same religion and culture. And that's why, for example, getting married in those societies seems to be a lot easier because people generally are following the same principles and have the same expectations of each other. But now more and more people are their own unique person. So now with this Apple Vision Pro, what is happening? In a lot of the marketing, in the videos, it was showing connection. It was showing people doing FaceTime calls and watching movies together or whatever. But it's all fake connection. It's the same type of connection that you get when watching pornography. It's the same type of connection you get when replying to a comment on social media, arguing back and forth on Twitter, whatever it is. It's connection, but it's fake connection. It doesn't have all the aspects that come from a real face-to-face -face conversation or a real life argument, a real life fight. I mean, for example, just the fact that when you're arguing with someone in real life, they could potentially just smack you in the face there and then. That is a real thing that maybe possibly could happen. That is a factor that is completely missing from social media debates and interactions. That's just one example of the difference that it makes. Not to mention that on social media, you can kind of be this anonymous person that your family and friends don't really know about. And so what you say is not filtered the same way as if you said it in front of people you know. What does this do compared to the conversations that you have in your local area and your local message with your colleagues, people that know you and see you in real life? you act differently. You act in a more controlled, disciplined way where you're trying to upkeep some sort of reputation, some sort of way of being and character. Whereas online, it's almost a free-for-all. And so this shows how when you move more and more digitally down that line, you become more fake. Your character can almost be manufactured. And although I don't fully understand it, but I can fully see how this causes problems for us. Another example is the dynamic of watching some YouTube videos. Let's say some short YouTube videos, whether they're five minutes or they're like 60 second TikToks or whatever. The experience you get from that of learning the Deen of Allah versus going weekly, for example, and sitting two hours at the feet of a scholar and going through a book cover to cover and having the scholar there seeing your interaction, asking you questions, asking you why you didn't come last week or asking what your opinion is on something. That is a very, very different experience, you can imagine. And so imagine taking the difference between those two things and applying it to your whole life. No doubt, there are some people in the background plotting and planning to isolate us more and more. Part of this is natural from the technology that's coming out, but I am certain that part of it is a deliberate attack on us. They want us isolated so that we're divided, so that we're weak, so that we're easy targets so that we don't have what Islam has taught us to come together, to be an ummah, to pray in jama'ah, to visit the sick, to have knowledge of the poor people in your local area. And of course, when we're isolated, when we're weak and vulnerable, they can control us. So why am I making this video? Why am I saying this? I mean, I'm kind of ranting, but I'm kind of saying to you, don't be a vegetable. Don't fall into these plots and plans that are bad for you and get out into the real world. Do a real life sport attend a local masjid dars or reminder or something. Go to the masjid and pray. Get involved in dawah, in activities, charity activities, volunteering in your local area. Don't fall into this trap and this idea that dawah is to be done online. There is dawah online and there is plenty of dawah, activism, charity work, volunteering 
to be done in real life in your local area. And actually, I would recommend that should be your focus. So basically, make sure you have real connection in your life, real interaction with people in 3D. And that's going to be good for your mental health. It's going to be good for your ejr and your echerah. And it's going to be good for avoiding all of the things that they can shove down your throat in a very controlled digital online environment. Now, the problem is a lot of brothers have told me there's no one in my local area I know that I can really relate to You're on the same wavelength as me. And this is part of the problem is that we've splintered into all our different cultures and ways of thinking, even within the same city. And that is a real problem. And so to find a balance between doing something which is real life connection, but also finding people who are on the same wavelength as you, I've put together a community where we do that. We're not all in the same country, we're not all in the same city, but we're on the same wavelength. And we try to have real interactions where, it, yes, it may be online, but it's not all through chat and through memes and stickers and emojis. It's actually through real conversations, live, in a call, with your video, with your microphone, and talking and conversing. And as much as possible, I try to integrate aspects that make connections with other people actually helpful. So if you're interested in that community, it might be open for enrollment right now. There'll be a link in the description here in the first comment. But other than that, just generally don't fall into this trap of going more and more online where they can control your life experience, your lifestyle, the way you think and the way you act and behave. This has been Amin. This channel's for you if you're a young, ambitious Muslim man. So now I can see you around.